Hi guys, it's Paula and I hope you are doing well. This is going to be my monthly get ready with me where I use the products that have been collecting dust in my stash. I do this in collaboration with my good friend Verity. She is Red Dirt and Stardust over on her channel. I will leave it linked down below so that you guys can see what her get ready with me looks like. And yeah, basically I have fun shopping my stash for products that either one, I have not used even once or two, I haven't used in a million years. And I play around with them for just one day a month. It's like my cheat day for project panning. And this is my third one so far and I've been having a ton of fun. It is about two o'clock in the afternoon. I do have some makeup on that I put on this morning before I started work. I was perfectly fine with the idea of n working without any makeup on. I'm just doing, you know, Google Meets and so nobody can really see me that well anyways. But then I thought, well, you look a little tired. Why don't you put a little under eye corrector on? And then I thought, well, you know, you should probably color correct around your nose too. So then I put my green color corrector on and then before I knew it, I had a bunch of makeup on. So I already have my foundation, my brows. On my eyelids, I have this darker side of this Revlon and that's what I've been wearing all day long. I just kind of have that all over my lid. And then I do have a brow bone eyeshadow on like a highlighting color. So I have cream blush, cream bronzer, cream highlight, I concealed. So we're starting with all of that already done. Let's finish my face finally. It's two o'clock, it's time to finish my face. I was a little surprised by my choice in eyeshadow palettes, but for today, I am going with this right here. This is the LMR Cosmetics Reina del Caribe. I cannot say that. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but um, yes, Reina del Caribe Eyeshadow Palette Volume 1. Here is what it looks like on the inside. I'm sure most of you guys know, but this is the brand that was created by Kathleen Light's friend and makeup artist, Gabby, and um, I was completely in love with this eyeshadow palette the second I saw it, and I didn't buy it, and... I tried to resist it, but then it came out in a boxy charm, I believe, a year or two ago, and it started showing up all over those websites where you can buy makeup, and I bought this off of eBay for like five bucks. So I don't usually recommend or personally buy makeup off of eBay or any of those sites, but this palette had never been touched. I could clearly see looking at the pans that it was literally a brand new untouched palette so i got lucky and i have swatched some of these shades as you can see you can see my fingerprint in some of them but i've never worn these on my eyes now the reason i bought this palette was specifically for this shade right here i don't know what it is about those silvery greens but i am just a total sucker for those kind of shades. But for some reason today, I'm just really feeling these mattes down here. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do, um, but I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna start with my eyes. So let me scoot in and we'll see what look I come up with. I have a huge stack of brushes that I brought out from the bathroom. I'm not sure, not that one. I'm not sure which ones I'm going to end up using. They're almost all dirty as always. And this doesn't have a mirror in it, so I'm going to be using my Jaclyn Hill and Becca palette for my mirror. And my phone, of course. I am going to go ahead and start with this orangey yellow shade, and I'm going to be running that throughout my crease and blending it upward. How have you guys been doing? What's new with you? I cannot believe that Halloween is like a week away. That was super pigmented. I just did like two taps. My kids are so excited about Halloween. I don't think they really understand how limited we are with the coronavirus still around. But um, there's a ton of kids in our neighborhood and I think there's gonna be enough people handing out candy that the kids won't really notice or be affected by it too much. But I have had some neighbors come up to me and be like, yeah, we're not doing Halloween this year, so don't knock at our door. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them for that. That's, that's fine. Ron is going to be a SWAT team member, and Hazel is going to be Wonder Woman. I just ordered 
long johns from Amazon for both of them because I'm, I'm worried that they're going to freeze their butts off in their costumes. I'm taking that same shade and I'm running it on my lower lash line. Okay, I'm stalling because I think in the end I'm going to be playing with some of these blues. So before I attack the blues, I'm going to go in with the orange and throw that in my crease as well. So how many of you speak more than one language? I, um, really, I only speak one language. But I did take four years of German class in high school, which in hindsight was probably not a good idea. I mean, it got me a good trip to Germany and I had a lot of fun, but it's not the most practical language to know in 2020. I would argue that outside of speaking English, Spanish would be probably the most practical second language to know. And so about a month ago, a little, maybe two months ago, Ron, my son, the seven-year-old, started expressing some interest in learning a second language. And he didn't have any strong thoughts. Look at that, that's gorgeous. He didn't have any strong thoughts about what language. So I said to him, you know, you should probably learn Spanish. It's gonna take you the farthest um, in the US at least. And so he's like, all right. So we downloaded the Duolingo app. Have you guys ever downloaded the Duolingo app on your phones? And we've been doing Duolingo for like 10 minutes a day. And I am seriously impressed not only with the app itself, but with my son and how quickly he's picking up what the app is teaching, he's really doing good. And so I try to sit with him and help him when he gets stuck and hopefully I'm learning Spanish too. I don't know if I'm actually ever going to learn Spanish. I kind of feel like there's some mental block with me that makes it impossible for me to learn a second language, but you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I cannot believe how beautiful these eyeshadows are blending out. I'm really enjoying them very much, but something is in my eye, an eyelash I presume. So in addition to his homework, he does about 10 minutes of Duolingo a day and he's really working hard at it. He's really stayed motivated. Every once in a while, I'll be like, hey buddy, it's Duolingo time. And he's like, why do I have to do Duolingo? And I'm like, cause you wanna learn Spanish. And then he's like, right, yeah. Okay, let's do Duolingo. And then he changes his attitude really quickly cause he really does wanna learn it. So I think it's really cool. Okay, let's deal with these greens. So I think I'm gonna do outer part of my eyelid, center part of my eyelid, inner part of my eyelid, and just use those three all over my eyes. That's the plan. Oh, this kind of color is just my jam. Oh, I love it. Should I just put the shade all over my entire lid and call it a day? I could do that too.
Let's do it. It's what I came here for. Let's do it. Goodness, this is just so pretty. So what I am wondering is, has anybody actually become fluent learning a language through an app like Duolingo? Like, they keep popping up advertisements, like little pop-ups saying like, 30 hours on Duolingo is equivalent to one semester at a college or a one semester course in a language. And um, I've had one semester of a course of language and it did not make me fluent in that language at all. It was a very basic beginner's course. So how much time would I have to spend on Duolingo to eventually become fluent in another language that I basically had no experience with prior to using that app? I'm just wondering. I'm wondering if I spend enough time on this app, if I could eventually become a fluent speaker in Spanish. Or if Ron can, more importantly, because he's the one that started all of this. Or is it just, eventually do you just have to be immersed in the language to pick it up? I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. I'm just kind of falling in love with these eyeshadows. I am loving this. And I kind of feel like I could wear this look every day. Like, is this look a summer look? Is it a fall look? Mm, it's probably not winter or spring, but I think this look would work great for summer or fall. I don't know. It is so pretty. Oh man, I'm messing up over here. My pinky just grew like twice the size. Now I gotta mess up on this side to make it even. Uh -huh. feel like a beautiful mermaid. It is so gorgeous. <gasps> All right, I'm gonna take that blue on my lower lash line as well. Darkest part on the outer side, the outside, outer side, whatever. Middle shade in the middle. I feel like everything went a little bit higher on this side than on this side. <sighs> so yeah, Ron will literally walk around the house saying, Juan come manzanas. Won't you? What do you know? What can you say in Spanish? 
to call me mom sometimes. <laughs> what else? It can say pasaporte. Pasaporte. Means passport. Very good. Okay, I'm going to stop my eyes right there, at least for now, and I'm going to move on to the rest of my face. For bronzer, I want to keep everything very warm with this look today. I'm missing having a tan, quite frankly. I'm pale and I'm sad. So I'm going to go in with the Amaretto shade from my Becca and Jaclyn Hill and use that blush as my bronzer today. Like I said, I do have cream bronzer on already from this morning. So... I mean, I look a little tan, just not as tan as I was. And I miss it. Oh, those greens are just so beautiful. I'm gonna put my highlighter on before I do blush, and the reason is I'm not sure if this highlighter is gonna look okay on me or not. For my highlighter today, I pulled this guy out. Who remembers this? I'm going to assume this was a mermaid collection because there's a little mermaid on, but the only thing I bought from that collection was this product right here, this, um, this highlighter kind of spoke to me. And again, it's that greeny, silvery shade. And I don't, there's a lot of gold in it as well. So I don't know if I bought this thinking I would use it strictly as an eyeshadow or if I bought this to use as a face highlight. But we're going to try it on my face and I might look horrible. So that's why I'm using this first before my blush. Because if it looks absolutely horrible on me, hopefully the blush will hide some of that. On the packaging, it just says Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Bar. I don't see a name on it. Wish me luck. I'm using my Morphe brush. This is the highlighting brush I use almost every single day. doesn't look hideous. It just looks really gold. It's kind of sitting on top of my skin. So I'm glad I'm putting this on first. That's that was the right call. It's Unfortunately, this isn't very flattering on me at all. It just looks like a stripe of gold on top of my cheekbones. Okay, well, I'm not going to highlight my nose or my cupid's bow. Well, maybe I'll highlight. Yeah, I'll do my cupid's bow. Sure, I'll do my nose anyways. What the heck? I mean... At least I don't look green. For my blush, I'm going to stick with the warm theme and I decided to pull out this Maybelline Master Highlight Blush in Coral something, Coral. I don't remember ever using this before, but it does look used. So maybe I've used it and I just have no recollection of it whatsoever. It is ridiculous. I own an obscene amount of blushes and although I've made some progress with project panning, I definitely have a couple lifetimes worth of blush. So this looks like a pretty orangey shade. I do have a hot pink cream blush on that I put on this morning. So hopefully the two will play nicely together and it'll work out.
I kind of feel like I should have reapplied some foundation on my face now that I've put on a bunch of makeup. I feel like I don't have very good coverage. I'm going to apply a little bit of setting powder on top of everything. Okay, I'm going to throw on some liner and some mascara and I will be right back. Good gravy. These eyeshadows are even more stunning in my bathroom light than they are right here. I've been in there for like 20 minutes staring at myself because this eyeshadow is amazing. I just kept going like this in the bathroom for like 20 minutes. All right, all I have left to do is lip products. I pulled a bunch. What did I pull? I have Dreamy from the Kathleen Lights and ColourPop collaboration, and I don't think I've used this even once, which is a crime. I have this old Maybelline nude in the Color Elixir line. I think it, I think these were called the Color Elixir. Yeah, the Elixir. This is just called Nude Illusion. And then I have two more nudes. These are both L'Oreal Infallibles. This is a match version in the shade Peach Pit. And this one's, I don't know what the finish is on this one, but it's in the shade Spicy Blush. I don't know. I think I'm going to go with Dreamy. see a lot of people go from like the outside in. I can't do it that way. I have to work my way from the inside out. Am I doing it wrong? I don't know. My goodness, that is a beautiful shade. It's really orangey. A little bit orangier than I was expecting it to be, but it kind of works with this look. All right, and this is the finished look. I absolutely love it. I am so glad I took one day out of project panning to shop my stash for some other items in my makeup collection that have been largely untouched for way too long. This was so much fun. What do you think? I really like this look. These are my kind of colors. I know I've been doing a lot of like blue looks lately and that's really not me. I don't tend to go for blue, but if I was to wear a bluish look, it would look like this because I think this is the prettiest blue ever. I am so impressed by the performance of this palette. I've really enjoyed it. Um, this is the look I see when I look at this palette, but I do think there's quite a bit of variety you can get out of this palette. It's not just a one look palette. I do think you could do a lot more with it than what I did. But when I looked at this palette, and for this being my first time using it, I kind of felt like I had to do this look because this is the look I see when I look at this palette overall. But I could see just using like this all over the lid and this on the inner corner, or you know, just these two or just the brown and the green. I do see a lot more options in this palette than just this look, but I had to do this look for my first look. Out of all the products I used today, the only one I was a little bit disappointed with is the highlighter. I don't think this is the most flattering highlighter I've ever worn. I'm really glad I applied it under my blush because the blush definitely helped 
to blend it out and kind of disguise that greeny golden shade that was just sitting on top of my skin. I don't think that's probably a good look for anyone, but it's definitely not a good look for me. I feel so fancy right now. I feel like I need my hair down. I feel like I need false lashes on or something, like just something more than a sweatshirt that's been cut off and a messy bun. I feel like I need something more than what I got going on today, but this is what it is. Please check out Verity and see what her look is for this month's Get Ready With Me with the Dust Collectors. Thank you to Verity for inspiring this project and for getting me to finally do it. I've been having so much fun these past couple of months. And that's it. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.